Hi, I'm Corey. Welcome to Creating with Scraps. This is episode nine of Build a Scrap Buster Idea Book. And though the projects themselves will be super short, the video will be a little bit longer because I discovered on Facebook where I can go to my channel and I can look at comments and I can see all the comments that I hadn't already seen. Even though I don't get notification all the time, um, I, I found that I could go there. And so anyway, I found questions and I written them down so I can answer questions that people had. So I'll do the, the um, two items for today, day nine first. And then once that's done, if you wanted to listen to the question part answered, you certainly are welcome to. And if you don't, well, you'll be done. Okay. So today's day nine and the two are top, flip, trifold, and tuck. All right. And I pulled some samples from this well-loved book because I only have a couple of journals. I have the flips, flaps, and folds in this, and the others that I've made, I've gifted or are given away or something. So I don't have a lot of materials that I can show you, but um, a tuck. This would be what I would consider a tuck. And a tuck in my world is simply just something that is glued usually on two sides, uh, not three sides, three sides makes it a pocket, and then you can tuck something behind it. Now, like this tuck has a pocket because I put a piece of, uh, this is actually vellum. When I say vellum this time, I mean vellum, not tracing paper. A um, piece of vellum on top. But it's a tuck because I can tuck it in behind. And the other one I mentioned was a, a, tri a top flip trifold. And there's several different ways that you can make those. Sewn and unsewn, opened and unopened. But all it is really is... Three pieces of paper, fold, fold. So this one I sewed on the edges and turned it into a pocket as well as a belly band. Okay, but that's still what I would consider a top flip trifold. And this one here, same idea. There's a pocket on the back, but it's a top flip trifold. So it folds once. I folded it up and sewed it here, folds twice, and there's the trifold. Um, okay, let's see here. It must be this one. Ah, here's another one. Same idea. This one has a side belly band, but top flip and glued here to put just some vintage ephemera in. So those are a couple types of the top flip trifolds. But these are also what I consider top flip trifolds. And they're just, again, three, three sections folded over and folded over. And this little koozie, what's it? is like a half circle divot and I got one at uh, Tuesday morning for I don't know five or six bucks by We Are Memory Keepers but there are punches that do the same thing there are dies that do the same thing in fact I think I even have a die this was just easy but you don't have to do this for example let's say you wanted to do this trifold to hold it close well you could glue maybe not sideways but you could glue this down on just part of the section and tuck it in and there's your trifold um, you don't have to have anything on it. You can just, you know, tuck it over like this. Oh, this would be a trifold, wrong one. Uh, there you go. Here's another trifold. And I even made myself a note. When I use this tool, you get... So let's say I wanted this to be exactly a certain length, right? So you double it to pick, to um, fit in your, your space. And then you've got an extra three quarter of an inch because the top top of the punch and I'll show you what I mean the top of the punch to this is three quarters of an inch so there you go that is a top flip trifold super super simple and the way I make of them with this is the first thing I do and am I in frame let me come in a little bit okay there we go uh it says top and bottom on this thing and the bottom is where you're wanting to punch the hole. And the beauty of it is, is it lines up. So I don't even have to worry about lining it up. And well, I do, I do have to line it up, but I have to line it up in here rather than the magnet piece. And on here, I don't know if you can see them, but there are numbers and grids so that you can center this. And I line my paper up with the top of the metal and that gives me my three quarter inch. And then I use the numbers to make sure that it's straight. And you know what? Because I'm going to use my beloved purple tape because normally I have it a little bit wider so I can hang on to it. But here I don't. So, and again, as somebody pointed out, 
Purple tape is just like a low tack tape. It's not quite the same thing as painter's tape. I do have some of that. It's a little bit less tacky, but it's the same idea. Somebody else mentioned using washi. Washi is fabulous, but it won't hold. It's not thick enough or designed to hold several pieces of paper, whereas this will. So I just like it. So I lined it up. Punch. And there is my, my little divot or notch I guess is a better word and I do it this way first simply because I'm lazy like that and it's easier and I don't have to measure and do anything exact because I don't like to do that and then I come in and I put the two pieces together and I just decided do I want do I want it down lower do I want it up higher my own frame there so you can see I can just fold this to where I want the creases to be Okay, let's see. I think I want this one down a little bit more. Oh, darn it. I made this too big. Ah, no problem at all. I'll just come in. I made that part up. I didn't really have this in mind for anything. And I'll cut a little bit off. Whoops, maybe I should cut it straight. There we go. I'll cut a little bit off. And then I don't have to redo my divot or my notch. I can just alter my page accordingly and just cut off on the other end. And that's why I choose to do it this way rather than measuring, simply because it's a lot more forgiving. And then I'll line it up, push it down straight. I'd use my bone folder, and there is my top flip trifle. All right. Um, if your name is Monica and you don't want a sneak peek at your book, um, stop looking right now, and I'll tell you when you can come back. All right. I'm only showing this one simply because I'm not going to show everything, but the I, the difference between a tuck and a pocket in my world is shown in here. And um, here, am I in the frame still? Okay, this would be a tuck. This would be a top tuck, but this is what I would consider a tuck. It's glued on one side and glued on a second side. It's not glued on three sides. And then you just bring something in. Well, maybe you do. And you tuck it underneath. Okay, so that would be a tuck. And then this is also a tuck. So I, even though I put a paper clip over the top, I've only got it glued on two sides, as you can see here. So I'm able to tuck, funnily enough, a trifold. This one, I didn't even use a notch or a divot or anything. I just folded it over into those three pieces and put a bit of lace on to, um, you know, indicate an opener and closure. So that would be a tuck and this would be a pocket simply because it's closed on three sides. So there you go. All right, if you were wanting just that, you're you're free to go. <laughs> Class dismissed. But um, I wanted to answer some of the other questions that people had had. And the first one is, this is designed to be a scrap buster idea book. And the whole purpose of it is to, we all have a bunch, well, most of us who junk journal have a lot of scraps. And the idea is to, find ways to use those scraps, but make it be productive. So like yesterday's, I was told the video was boring. Well, it wasn't intended to be anything all that interesting or exciting because it was tabs and tags. And, and you know, we see those in multitudes and there's tons of things you can do with them, but they are something that you use with your scraps. So so there you go. There's the reason for that. And I know that everybody has different supplies and different interests and different likes and so on. And this is I mean, my, my purpose with this is find what works for you, what you like, what you're inspired by, and include that in your own idea book so that when you do have a lot of scraps, you've got some ideas of things to make. Okay, there you go. And I was high tech this time so that I didn't mess it up. And I really hope I'm in frame because I know I zoomed in and I didn't zoom back out. And there you go. So basic gray magnets. Uh, I've had several people ask about the magnets that I got. And you can in the US on Amazon purchase a single pack, which is 12 of these, what they call uh, large disc magnets. Basic Gray is the brand. And I want to say it was $6.50, I think. They also, there is also an offering for a two pack. So you get the large disc magnets and the small magnets. And there are mm, five times four, 20. There are 20 in these, and it came in a two-pack, and I, I don't remember what it was, 14, 15 bucks, something like that. So these are the magnets that I've been talking about. Uh, basic gray disc magnets on Amazon. I'm sure other people have them. I'm sure you can get them elsewhere, but that's where I got them. 
All right. A book. Somebody asked me how I made, is this even remotely in frame, these little itty bitty books. Now I put it on a paper clip um, and just put the clay paper clip on back, but I've also made them to tuck into things. And I was asked how I made these little itty bitty books because I use the sewing machine, though you certainly don't have to. You can use a pamphlet stitch. You can even use a staple and in Mm, I'm not going to use staples for it because I need it for a project. But I will show you very quickly. And again, this is scraps. So when I put scrap books, this is what I'm talking about with scrap books. I use little scraps or offcuts and I make them into a mini book. And these, for those of you who ask, these are from my friend Carrie from Witchcraft Do You Do? And they're her chipboard little itty bitty letter things. And they are so cool. So that's that's what this little guy is. Um, okay, so to make these little books, what I do is I get some scraps of paper in roughly the same size. They don't have to be exact or perfect or whatever. And then I fold them over and it's quite chunky. And I'll usually use my bone folder, but I'll fold it. And you can see, maybe you can see, I'll bring it up as close as I can that it kind of fans because of the displacement of paper due to the fold. And this is where I use my rotary cutter and my ruler to, oh here, I'll use this little little ruler here, to trim that up. I wait until I've got them together and I put my little, ah, oh, here we go, my little mat. I put my little mat right here, okay? And so then I will do this to hold them again there's back to my purple tape it's the same piece that i've been using all along you're probably sick of seeing it but it does a pretty good job of holding it in place um whereas maybe washi might not hold it as tight i'm going to turn it to the side just because of the tripod in my hand and i will line it up with the farthest edge the edge that comes back the most and i'll line them up and i'll hold my ruler in place and then i just use my rotary cutter to cut those extras. When I use my paper trimmer, because of the thickness, sometimes it doesn't cut straight or I have to like hammer down on it basically. And um, it just, it doesn't do as nice and neat of a job as the rotary trimmer does. That's the reason I use the rotary trimmer. Though if you wanna use your scissors, absolutely use your scissors, they'll still work. All right, and this particular one I needed a vellum cover for. so. I'm going to put the pages inside my vellum cover like this, and then I open it up to the center page. Now you'll see they're offset because the book's open, and that's that's the way that this works. Then I'll get, I center it, and I'll get one of these little clips. I'll get two of these little clips and I'll hold the clips in place. And then I come to my sewing machine and I sew right down the center. Now, my personal preference is because of the type, I will sew on the outside because of the type of the stitch. I mean, in a perfect world, you wouldn't see a lot of difference, but I never get the tension exactly right. So I want the underside to be in here. So talk amongst yourselves for just a moment. I've got my machine set up and I'm gonna go sew that. And again, I don't put it on the widest stitch, but I do a pretty wide stitch because the tighter your stitches, the more likely you are to tear it. Another thing is I don't start at the edge. I start down about a quarter of an inch and then I back stitch up to the edge. And the reason is I don't get a thread hanging off at the very edge. And I'll show you what I mean in just a second. I'll, I won't clip my threads. I will, um, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay. That's another thing I do for those of you who are new. I have one of the, these heavy duty magnets. I keep my sewing machine on an Ikea cart that I flip the basket upside down just because it's super handy. And I have one of these heavy duty magnets. And then these scissors are just for threads. And so I keep it right on my cart on my machine so I don't lose these scissors and I don't use them for anything other than threads. So you can see here what I'm talking about. I didn't Am I in frame? I didn't start at the edge, so I don't have a loose edge of a thread right here. I started down, oh, I don't know, maybe a half an inch or so in, so I don't have that loose thread. And the same thing at the bottom when I finished. I didn't end 
right here at the end of my sewing piece, I came back down and backstitched just a tiny little bit. And that way I don't get any loose threads on the back. And same thing on the inside. That's just my own personal preference. Yeah, no, you don't have to do it that way. But yes, that's kind of how I do it. And then this is actually, you can see here, it's just a little longer than I like. And that's the beauty of the rotary trimmer. I can bring it back down here. And back to my beloved purple tape. I've been inking most of the day, so my I'm sure my hands show it. And I will rotary the edge a little bit closer. I don't want it to be right on top of it, but I do want it to be a little closer than it is. I've learned the hard way when I'm done with it, I automatically close it. If I leave it open, this little blade is very sharp. Well, unless it's dull because you've used it a lot, but in a perfect world, your blade is sharp and it's really easy to cut yourself. I do have some scars on my hands and, ah, oh, see, look, I tore it. Dang, Nabbit. But you know what? That's fixable because I can come in right here and just make my book a little bit narrower and I'll fix my mistake. Okay, mistake fixed. And that is how I make a little mini book. And it doesn't really matter on this one because there's no print on it front or back. So for the person who asked how I make these little mini books, there you go. This one would be obviously longer and leaner, and I might trim it down just a tiny bit, but but I needed something this size. So, mini book. Um, next one was double-sided paper clips. Somebody asked, um, actually I think a couple people asked, how I make the double-sided paper clips, and I will show you. All right. First thing you need is, well, you don't have to put the lace bits on top if you don't want to, but I like that, so I did. And all I did to do this, if you're new or haven't seen this before, all I do is, you know, your paper clip has two loops and you want your, whether you're going in from the right, in from the left, or in from the top, I guess it would work at the bottom, you want your double loops facing in toward your page. So if this is my book, right? I want my loops facing in. No matter which way I'm going, I want the double loops facing in. So when I put the lace on, I want the lace hanging out the edge or the top or the bottom or the sides or what have you. So I put the lace on the single loop. And all I do to do that is I'll get lace, trim, ribbon, sari silk, whatever. Bring it under on that single loop. And I have friends that tease me for the little itty bits of lace that I save. Like, look at that. That's just a tiny, can you see that? Tiny little bit. I mean, it's not even a half an inch. Well, maybe it's a half an inch. But it's perfect for this. Look, look. I mean, it's just exactly what I wanted to put right here. And then I'll come to my sewing, um, go to my sewing machine, and I'll do a single stitch right across the top. And it's above where the metal is, so it doesn't get in the way of the metal. But it just gives me a nice finished edge. You can take a couple free stitches or you can staple. So you don't you don't have to use your sewing machine or if you don't have a sewing machine. So that's what I do. All right. Um, so paper clip. Then I get two pieces of cardstock. You can use thin paper, but I don't highly recommend it simply because it tears easier. Um, you can use heavier weight copy paper if you want to, but I generally use cardstock because I have it. And I cut them to the same size, or close to the same size. I guess I didn't cut them to the same size on this one. And then I put the paper clip over it, and it doesn't matter which is the front or the back. I put the paper clips over both, just like that. And then I get my packing tape. You can use regular tape, you can glue them down. Um, I've seen a lot of people um, use washi over this. I like this because it's thin and it's sturdy. So I'll put my packing tape on one side and my pack, and plus I have it, I always have packing tape. And then my packing tape on the other side. All right, next. I decide what I want 
to be on each side. And I've pre-done these simply because I wanted to have it ready to go and I didn't want you to have to wait too long. Okay, too messy over here. Gotta clean some of this up. And I just took a piece of cardstock, folded, folded, and made a little bit of this, right? So I'm gonna put this on top of my paper clip and my paper. And yes, this is the uh, the reptile glue that one of my viewers recommended. And I am using this 95% of the time. The only time I've had it clog up is when I was using it on video the other day. I really like it. One, because it has a little more wiggle room. I have found it's got a little bit more time to play with it than I do with art glitter glue. And two, it's a little bit thinner than the art glitter glue. So it's a little bit more forgiving and it clogs a whole lot less. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm really, really happy with it. I'm not gonna necessarily give up on my art glitter, glitter glue, but I really like this a lot. The only thing I don't love is this is super handy how they have it so that it puts it up here, you know, close it off so it doesn't clog but I find that it, I'm always sticking it in my project. So that kind of is a bummer, but there you go, can't win. All right, now I'm gonna put some of my glue, whether it's art glitter glue or reptile or barely there or barely something that other people use, and I am going to glue all the way around. Could I sew this? No, and the reason I can't sew this is because it would sew the front and the back pieces together. Not something I wanna do. All right, and then this is going to be my top. I decided I didn't. Now, if I wanted this to be a side pocket, side over the edge, I would just put it like this, but I want this particular one to be the top. So I'm gonna lay it on top. See, there's just a little more wiggle room. And from the back, you can see, maybe you can see in the frame there. And then I will come clip it down until it dries and it, it dries really quickly. I mean, it's not like I need to leave this on here for five minutes, but um, I just like all the pressure points to be um, pinned down for a minute. And then I only wanted a pocket on one side on this one. So I didn't put a pocket on this. This is blank. I would probably, I inked the edges, but I'd probably put just a tiny little cluster on here um, just to have some decoration on the other side. All right, so I've left that clamped long enough. I'll save these for the other piece. I guess I could do them both at once. I could have, but I don't line them up as well as I should, even though they're the same size. Well, see, look, they're allegedly the same size, but I didn't measure it super perfectly. That's okay, I can come in and, and trim this down. No, I know what I'll do. I'll put a piece of lace at the bottom. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Um, I'll put a piece of, well, I can do that later, but I'll just put a piece of lace at the bottom because the sides are perfect and the top is perfect. It's just a little bit, you know what? It doesn't matter because they'll be on two different sides of pages. So scratch my loss, stand down disregard. Okay. And I'm going to go to this side and I do the same thing. Are you guys yelling at me? Did I do that right? No, okay, good. It's the right side. But I still probably will put a piece of lace there just because. And then I'm going to clamp it. And I'm going to give that a minute because it's really thick at this point. But it's going to go over two pages, so it's not. See, I don't want that. I want those to catch with each other. No, I don't because I want to make sure that these bottoms don't glue together. Mm, so glad you said that because I do not want the bottoms of these guys to go together because that's where the paper clip's going to come in. I want these guys to go together. Okay. There we go. So this front and back get clamped. There we go. That's the ticket. This front and back get clamped, and then this front and back get clamped. Uh, it's really not as complicated as I'm making it look, I promise. All right, so you see I've got two pieces because I want this to go over both sides. So those two pieces of cardstock that I put in, the right side goes to the right side and the left side goes to the left side. So each piece of cardstock I put between the paper clips has a mate that goes on top. All right, and we're gonna call that dry, close enough. I might let it sit a little bit more, but 
And here we go, Col piece of colored stock, cardstock. And there is my double-sided paper clip. All right. I've got, now if this were a full page, you obviously wouldn't see that. And I can decorate here. Now you can see, you can see a little bit of that paper clip, which is why I said I'd probably put a cluster or something there. If you do this with thin uh, copy paper, you're going to see the whole bulky thing sticking through. So when I do this, I either use a busy pattern paper or I plan to cover that up in some way, shape, or form. Like this, this is a pocket. And where did my little book go? I just had my little book. And I just moved it to the side. Okay, here we go. And I would put something in this pocket like, like that so that you wouldn't see that paper clip. All right? And there is your double-sided paper clip. Now, if you're using a longer piece, right, you could do two paper clips. Same exact thing, but use two paper clips, one on each side. And um, you could even use two bits of ribbon if you wanted to. But that is a double-sided paper clip. Okay? That one is done. Okay, double-sided paper clip and book and page and done. The next question I had was the double loop closure and I don't think I've got one right here. And that flap I did in one of the one of the mini journals that had a top and bottom flap like this. And that was the next question that I got. And so let me I'm going to put it inside of one of the journals I'm making. So I'm going to grab that. But I don't want you to see whose it is because, you know, I don't want to ruin the surprise. All right, so um, journal. Here it is. Oh, I don't want to put it on that page because that's really pretty. But you know what I could do is I could put it right here. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. All right, so you can see it's almost exactly a perfect fit. I don't want it to be quite that snug. So I am going to... And I'm going to show you the whole, the double loop closure and the flap because they kind of go hand in hand. So I'm going to trim this down a little bit and it's the right color so I don't have to worry about um, a little bit of, and I will save those. So I want it to be just a bit smaller than the page, it's just a bit narrower and a bit smaller because I don't want it to catch. Yeah, that's good. All right, see? So I've got this piece right here. Okay, and I'm going to put it on this. This is this journal actually isn't for a person. This is my just-in-case journal. True story. I had a friend in college named Justin Case, and um, his nickname was Brief because he was like basketball player 6667, so his nickname was Brief Case, but Justin Case. And so whenever I make something, especially when I've got several, like um, my ink boxes or something, I make a just-in-case product as well. So I have, this is my extra book, my just in case book. Like if it doesn't get to a person or it gets lost in the mail or it gets ruined or something, it gets wet. I do put these in plastic bags when I mail them because I do live in the Pacific Northwest. But at the same time, you know, I want to have a plan B. I don't want anybody to have to wait any longer than they already have. So this is my just in case journal. Okay. Sorry, I got sidetracked there. This piece I want this to open up and down, right? Now I could do it right in the middle, but I'm gonna do it where the natural line in this paper is. So I'm going to cut it right where that natural line shows from the design, okay? So this will be my flap that goes up and this will be my flap that goes down. And then what I do, because I like them rounded, the ne very next thing I do is I round them because it reminds me of which is top and which is bottom. So I'm going to come in and round the corners that meet up. All right. So like this. Okay. The next thing I need to do is make those double metal closures. And the way I make those double metal closures, not metal, they're paper, but the double closures is this. I get a scrap of paper, right? And I get two circle punches. Now, uh, circle punches are what I would consider an absolute essential. And you don't have to have a dozen of them or anything, but, you know, a couple different sizes. The sizes I use most often are a larger one for the divots that I take. I use the three-quarter punch and the half-inch punch all the time when I'm making thumb tabs and these little closure pieces or... Um, 
the tops for a tag. These are the two I use most often. And then this size, it's not marked. It's an old, old, old imagination one. And it's a long arm, which I like, but also it's the perfect size for a little Brad. I don't know if you can see that there, but it's the perfect size. So I've got my scrap of paper that I want to make my little divots for. Now this is a really thick, it's a Tim Holtz paper, which, you know what, since I have you here, I'm going to show you a trick. Because when I first bought this, I was not impressed because of how slick the paper was, but it's designed to be sanded. And it's this color once you sand it. And it's so stinking cool. Um, I'll do a little bit more so you can really see. And it just gives it this cool, worn effect. And once you've sanded it, it takes ink really well. So if you're wanting to ink or darken your pages or edges, it'll do it really well then. But isn't that pretty awesome? So if you like that look, there you go. Tim Holtz paper, cardstock. Um, I want to say it's like eight by eight or something like that. This is this is this. All right, so I go in with my small hole first, the, the hole that I'm going to use for my brad or my eyelet. And I will, back to what I was saying. If I wasn't using the Tim Holtz paper, if I was using um, a thinner paper, I would punch three or four holes, um, three or four circles, because you want something with a little bit of heft to hold your string when you wrap your string around. And I've got that in here somewhere. Oh, here it is. It's over here. Sorry, guys. You want something with a little bit of heft because you're going to wrap your string around it. This is pretty thick, so I don't need to do, you know, punch three or four times. So I will come in and punch my hole, and I'll come down and punch another hole. So these will be the two that are going to go on the top and the bottom sections to connect them. All right, I punch that center hole, the small hole first, because it's a whole lot easier to center it once. So if you can see there, I don't know how close I am in frame. It's a whole lot easier once that hole is in place. And if you can see in the center there, it gives me where the center is. There's like a little notch taken out. I don't know if you can see it or not, but there it is. And if my vision were better, I could see that when I'm lined up, right? And then I would know that where I'm taking this is in the center. So line it up, um, this, because this is thick paper and this isn't a big punch, I have to push it down on my desk. And you can see here it got stuck. I can just well, push that back through. This is an old punch, Carl punch. Okay, here we go, there we go, I got it loose. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the second one. I'm going to line up the hole, make sure it's centered-ish, doesn't have to be perfect, and push. All right, now I'm going to punch two more of these holes for the back, or two more of these holes, two more of these circles for the back of the, um, to cover the brad or the eyelet, whichever. Well, you, if you're going to do an eyelet, you can't. You don't want this back piece because you need to push your string through the eyelet. But I'm going to use a brad, so I'm going to punch two more. Now, if I had, if this were thinner paper and I were punching a couple more of these, I only put the holes in the top ones, whichever ones are going to be on the top. So if I were going to layer this, I would layer this and glue them together and wrap them or use my fingers to make sure they're straight. And then I would go in with my pokey tool and poke a hole so I don't have to try to center every single hole. And then I use the pokey tool to poke the next hole. And if I were doing in one more dimension thick or one more layer thick, you know what? I think I will because it's thick, but it's not super thick. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I'll put a little bit of glue and I'll put it like this. And I'll just turn it around to make sure that it's lined up. And I put a lot of glue on there. You don't need nearly that much glue. All right, so there's one. And then the second. See, it makes more sense to put the glue like this. That way you don't get glue popping out the center of your hole. But, you know, I never said I was as bright as I should be. All right. Now, I will get my foam pad and my pokey tool and I will poke my hole in the center. Like I said, it's way easier to line up that way and poke it. And the same thing with this one. 
This one's got glue. And I will poke it. Okay, like that. And I'll put this away. And now I need two more circles of that same paper so that I can cover the brads in the back. And it doesn't matter that they're the sanded ones because I'll probably sand them or ink them anyway. Okay, there's one and two. All right, so that part's done. If I was doing a little bit bigger page, I would use the three quarter inch one. All right, next step. I've got these two pieces. Okay, good. I've got these two pieces lined up. And what I do is, again, I'll use my grid. This is just shy of three. And this is just shy of three. All right. And I want this whole, the um, circle bits centered, mostly centered. They don't have to be perfect, but, you know, I do kind of want them close. And I also want them to line up. Um, so let me put it right there because when these are together like this, I want it to wrap around. Yeah, that's good. So then I will come and mark it where I want it. Oh, good. And I smeared the ink. That was smart. And I'll mark it. Okay. Then I'll come back with this hole punch again and I'll line up the hole. All right, then I will get some mini brads. I put all the little mini brads together. So let's see the colors, which colors. I want to make sure I get the colors correct. Um, I want two that are the same. I don't necessarily care which two, but I want two that are the same color. I think these two are. Nope, those two aren't. Nope, those two aren't. See, that's the thing. These are the antique brads so they're okay Corey this is ridiculous you've got to get a couple that are the same color here yeah those two are the same color okay so I'll put those aside and okay so I've poked the hole in here I poked the hole in here now I'm going to put my little brad now you can see that's super tiny. You can use the next size up, Brad. In fact, I often do. But this one works really well, um, just because it does. And it gives me, you can see here, a little bit of wiggle room, which I like because I am prone to making mistakes. And then I will fold these down. And once they're folded down, I will trim them off because you can see if I were to come in with my, you can see that it would stick out the edge. Right, the folded down metal prongs would stick out the edge. So I'm gonna cut that down and cut this down. And I don't press it super tight because I wanna be able to put the string in there, but I, I press it tight enough to hold it. Then glue and circle. And while this one's drying, I will do the same thing to the other one. Okay, uh, Brad, circle discs, line them up, oh, like that, okay, good, and fold them down. All right, now while this one's drying, I am going to ink around this. And I apologize in advance, but inking is essential for me because you do want, if you're going to ink this, you want to ink it before you put it in your book. 
simply because it's too much of a pain to ink after. So inking is the next step on this. And notice I'm not inking this edge and the reason on the back because that's where I'm gonna put my washi tape. Because so I use a washi tape hinge. You can use fabric if you want to, but um, you can use paper. You certainly don't have to use washi, but I'm gonna use a washi because that's what I've got. All right. Now, while this one's finishing drying, I'm gonna take my washi and remember, it's gonna be, this is gonna be the top, so it's going to flip up, okay? So this is the inside, this is the front. I'm gonna flip it over so that I'm working on the inside. Yeah, mind frame, okay, good. Um, putting a thin layer of glue here. You don't want too much glue. And if you do too much, just go like that. It's forgiving. Then I'm going to take my washi and actually this washi would have been okay without that because it's a little bit stronger. And I'm going to put my washi about halfway on this paper. Are you there? Yeah, okay. About halfway. So this is half inch washi, so I'm gonna line it up to about the quarter inch mark. Okay? Because I want part of it off, see? Because I want this section to be on the inside of the book. And then I'm going to trim down this washi. I'm going to cut it flush with the edges of my paper. Okay. And that is what my washi looks like. Okay, so I'm going inside the book. And I decided it was going to go on this page. And this is the top section. So I'm going to glue it in like this. So again, I'm going to put a thin line of glue right here. And I am going to put it in the top of my book. And this is where I like this glue better than art glitter glue. Oh, you can see here, I didn't put it to the top of the page. Well, I've got a little bit of wiggle room because it's not as um, unforgiving as art glitter glue. So I'm gonna line it up with the top of the page like that. Well, maybe like that. And I put paper down in there, so if I smeared the glue a little bit, which you can see I did, it's not a big deal because the paper is going to hide that glue. And then I'll push it down. I don't want it to impede on this, this fold here. Okay, good. Now, all oh, that's staying put. Okay, the first time I've had a problem with it is when I'm showing you. Normally it works slick, slick like a whistle. But, you know, because I'm showing somebody, it's not as cooperative. Okay. So, creased here, creased there, and it will flip up. See? Flips up. And, oh, look, I tore a little bit there because I had glue. I pulled it down too far. But that's okay because, like I said, I am going to put a piece of paper there. Writing paper. And this, now, like this. Okay, so single page, don't glue the second page to it. And then it'll flip up. I'm gonna let that dry a minute before I try to flip it up again, because I don't wanna peel it off. And I'm checking it because I put, remember I put a little bit of glue down in here. I do not want the top to be glued down to that. So gave it a little wiggle room. All right. Same Now, I'm going to go do the same thing on this one. I'm going to ink around the edges. This could be a flips, flaps, and folds, too. So if somebody was saying I need one more for their book because they have 30 pages, you could use this as a flip, flap, and fold because it is. I was using thinner paper, or um, uh, thicker paper, cardstock with this, which is why I didn't, you know, you just use a long section and fold it up because that would have made this even more thick than it already is. All right, and then repeat the process, but without the ears, hopefully this time. Put a little bit of glue. Put a little bit of washi. I didn't use my grid to line it up, but still good enough. It'll still work. It's farther than I wanted, but yeah, it's okay. All right. 
out. And now I'm going to, you know, I think what I'll do is I'll put the thin line of adhesive right here. Why not? And let's see, I want it to go like that. And I want it to line up. So I want them to just touch, not overlap, right? this down right see like I said this has a little bit more wiggle room a little bit more forgiving than the all right glitter glue okay crease crease okay and when this is dry there we go. And like I said, I will put, well, I'll put lined paper in there, but I'll put lined paper in here for writing and maybe I'll even do a, a flip up or a flip down or what have you. So you won't even see where I cut and tore that paper. And there we go. Okay. Then when it's lined up and it's matched, I'd let this dry a bit. I mean, it's dry, but it's not perfectly dry. Then if I'm going to put what I do if I want to string a little bead on, I put a bit of glue around the tip of the thread and I roll it in my fingers until it's dry. I make a needle basically. And then I'll string a bead on or beads or what have you. And when I've got a long piece of string, I'll leave this so I don't have to do it every time. And then I'll bring it down and work at this end. So we're gonna assume I put the bead on and then all I do is come in here and make it as long as I want. Um, the general rule of thumb is three times, so if you go around twice, and that would be the closure. All right, that was that question. So there is the double loop closure and the flap, okay? You can see here it's pretty dry now. And like I said, I would put, I'm going to put paper in there, but you don't need to see me glue down paper. That's pretty self-explanatory. All right, that's that one. Two more things. Uh, quickly, I have always mailed my journals in a box. In fact, the ones that I've already shipped out, I put in the HP Instant Ink boxes because they're the perfect size. And so when I made these journals, I that day ordered boxes in the same size as the HP Instant Ink because I didn't have enough of those. And they were supposed to be here last week. Well, they didn't arrive and I got a message that they're not going to be here till the 14th. So my question is, do I wait until the 14th to, to mail the rest of the journals? Or do I try a padded envelope? Now, I've looked around town and nobody carries boxes in that size. Um, I, I could go bigger boxes, but that kind of defeats the purpose too of keeping it small and compact. Uh, how, have you guys had good luck with the padded mailers? Am I going to be safe using a padded mailer? Will the items get there okay? Or should I wait until the boxes arrive? So that I need advice on. For those of you who are following along with the variety of projects that I've been doing. Obviously, the squirrel with these mini albums has taken uh, me off on a tangent. Yes, I'll put lace on this and I'll put a closure and such. But um, And so the Stamperia Forest album, I've been working on it for a while, but I don't want to stop in the middle of this series and start on that. So realistically, that won't begin until the 1st of June, when we're done with the scrapbook idea book, you know, with um, a page or a project or um, an idea, not scrapbook, scrap buster idea book. Each day, it just realistically won't happen. So in June, I will start a mini a month. And my first one is a daffodil. And um, I'll start the Stamperia Forest. And for those of you who've been waiting for that, my apologies. But at the same time, I just I want to make sure I do it justice. And um, finish up these other projects because I'm a notorious for squirrel. All right, the next thing I wanted to say about the mini a month, I have lots of ideas, but one of the things that we're gonna be doing or one of my suggestions, you can do any theme you want. And I'm gonna probably mix it up a little bit with how the albums are made and what size they are and how they're closed and such. But one of the themes I'm going is you. And what I mean by that is, I've been collect, trying to collect things for a while now for the year I was born. I was born in 65, January of 65, in fact. And so I've been trying to collect things that say 65, like great example, 
this basketball card, Putnam, 1965. So I will save that. This really cool stamp that I've got. Oh, look, it says 65 down here. So I'll use this. Um, you can do it to your month. Maybe you just want things from the month you were born. You can use the year you were born, you know, collect items that have that date, like postage stamps or um, postage cancellations or magazines or articles or pictures or famous things or whatever. You can use, um, like I said, the month, the year, or you can do famous people born on the same day that you were born, um, however you want to do it. But that is going to be one of the themes. And the reason I'm telling you now is if you're choosing to do what I'm doing, um, that could take a little while to collect all the items, you know, kind of like a baby book, memory book of sorts about the year you were born, what was happening in the world, that type of thing. So if you're going to follow along or play along with me, that might be something you want to collect. And I think finally, I got asked for advice on mailing. And if you've, if you've had a lot of practice um, mailing journals, I would love to hear what your thoughts are. Should I go ahead and go with a padded mailer or should I wait until the boxes arrive? So, all right. Thank you so very much. And I'm sure this is long. I don't even want to look and see how long it is. And thank you for sticking in with me. Take care and happy creating.